In this module we also will talk about the value of 5 minute ECG versus um, a 24 hour ECG, about radiographs, echocardiography and some newer methods um, on doing uh, an echo. We will talk about biomarkers and also briefly cover some genetic tests that are available right now. So many of these dogs with dilated cardiomyopathy actually have arrhythmias. Atrial fibrillation, for example, is quite common in giant breeds, so Great Danes, Irish Wolfhounds. But it also might be a sign in Doberman pinchers, for example, but then only in an advanced stage. Ventricular arrhythmias, on the other side, is quite common in Doberman pinchers, in boxers with arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, um, but it also can be seen in Great Danes as well, and obviously also in other breeds. The ventricular arrhythmias are also the cause um, for syncope or then sudden death. So how do we diagnose these uh, VPCs? If a dog um, has ventricular tachycardia, as you can see on that slide, um, you can pick that up on a normal ECG in many instances. But the problem is that these VPCs, these ventricular premature contractions, are not always and equally distributed over a full day. So sometimes they are there, and then sometimes for an hour there's nothing and then they have a run of ventricular arrhythmias. So the gold standard to diagnose ventricular premature contractions is the Holter monitor, which is another word for the 24-hour ECG. And here in many breeds, 50 or 100 VPCs per um, 24 hours is considered normal. So if it is above that cutoff value, then usually the diagnosis of an arrhythmogenic stage of the cardiomyopathy is made. Often, or in certain types of dilated cardiomyopathy, such as in Dobermans or boxers, they can have several thousands of these VPCs. So here we can see how we put um, a 24-hour ECG or a Holter ECG on a Doberman pincher. It is quite important to do shaving um, of the hair, and then we also clean um, the skin so that the ECG patches are in very good uh, contact with the skin of the dog. After we have placed the ECG electrodes on the dog, they are wrapped um, and covered um, so that they are not slipping away. And finally we put a halter vest on the dog, which is another um, protection of the electrodes and also on top of the dog we can attach now the Holter monitor um, to the electrodes and in certain kinds of um, Holter monitors we actually can control on the machine by itself if we have a good ECG signal. After the ECG is 24 hours on the, on the dog we take off the um, Holter monitor or the owner does that by themselves and they send it to us and then the next step is to go to a computer which has a special software on it. Since we use today now digital recorded Holter ECGs um, we can put now the ECG data into the computer and use the special uh, software which is different from each com uh, company or from the Holter monitor that they are using and the software will try to make a first analysis that we can see here. So we get an overview over 24 hours and the software tries to pick up normal beats and also for example ventricular premature contractions or runs or um, also um, couplets, triplets, and so on. The problem with Holter software is that they are usually programs for humans. And therefore it has some problems in detecting all kind of arrhythmias. Sometimes they are even over-interpreting. 
So this is what is kind of time consuming and uh, you also need some experience in uh, doing the Holter analysis. As you can see on the screen here, um, the software suggests normal beats and it also um, makes a suggestion of certain templates which are for example here VPCs. So now the job is to scroll through the different templates and control if this is actually a real VPC that is correctly identified or if the software was missing some VPCs or if it identified some artifacts and annotated them for example as um, VPCs. Here we can see an example of an artifact where the software thought this is a VPC but looking at the ECG this is basically just an artifact. So this can be in dogs sometimes quite time consuming so it takes between 30 minutes and up to uh, an hour or several hours depending how many artifacts we see and how well we want to make an analysis. Obviously if you are doing research you want an exact number for example if you do drug trials um, if you just want to get a brief overview how many VPCs there are um, is there a reduction it probably doesn't matter if there's 10,000 or 9,000 but for research you want to do you uh, want to know it very exactly although a uh, Holter monitor is the gold standard to diagnose VPCs in dogs. It has some disadvantages. It is not readily available, so it's not in every practice available. And sometimes people need to drive several hours in some countries to the next place that can perform a Holter examination. And it is a time-consuming analysis and you need a, a good experience with the Holter analysis. And this basically makes the Holter examination also expensive. So the question is, could we not just use a short normal ECG, which is available in most of the private vet veterinary practices, as a replacement of the Holter? So we did a study a couple of years ago where we compared the value of a five-minute ECG and compared that to a 24-hour ECG. And we used several hundred ECG and Holter uh, pairs. So what we basically found here in Doberman pinches was that we would miss about one-third of the dogs that actually had on Holter analysis more than 100 VPCs, as you can see here on this slide. On the other side, there were only a few false positive cases. So that means for private practice, if you detect in a Doberman pincher, and that probably accounts also for other breeds, if you detect at least one VPC during your physical examination, during the echocardiography, or while you write an ECG, that this means that this dog has a high chance that he will have more than 50 or more than 100 VPCs in the next 24 hours. So this would be an indication to push the owner, especially in a Doberman or in a Boxer dog, to have a Holter examination performed, because it's quite necessary for treatment and also for diagnostic purposes to have a good number before you start the treatment. You also have to note that if you do not see a VPC, that this does not exclude that the dog will have more than 50 or 100 VPCs per 24 hours. So it's not a perfect screening test. It would be more a quite specific test.